I would say that my predictions are so consistently incorrect that it makes me incredibly optimistic about future studies in the field. We have, in my research group, we have um, one group meeting per week and we also have four subgroup meetings per week. And looking back over the 20 plus years that I've been running a laboratory, I suspect it's probably a true statement that easily in more than half of these meetings, my students and I will discuss an observation which will lead to a moment of if this, then that. And then we'll do some experiments. And we will meet again down the road in one of these meetings and if this, then that, produced that which we did not expect. And so my feeling about predictions is that we must make them because it's part of the scientific method. Um, but I also feel strongly that we need to maintain a, a high level of humility uh, when we are studying complex systems like molecules. And of course, the more complex the molecule, uh, the more difficult it is to make reliable predictions. But at the same time, um, I don't know how long it will take, um, but my observation is that we do better and better and better. And I always love to share the story of uh, the events in my research group around Y2K. Everybody was worried when the clock went from 1999, when the calendar went from 1999 to 2000, that the world was going to end, none of the computers were going to work, the banking system was going to fail, all those uh, dire uh, predictions, many of which, um, maybe all of which turned out to be uh, uh, incorrect. For my young research group at the time, we had all of eight people or so. We had four group meetings in a row. And I asked the students um, to divide into four groups of two. And approaching the new year, uh, the first two students I asked to go to the journals and bring five to seven papers that they thought looked cool from 1970. And we'll talk about them. And the next week, two more students did the same thing for 1980. And we talked about those papers. Just the, the only criteria was what they found interesting about the field of organic chemistry. Third week, same thing, 1990. Fourth week, uh, we did, you know, the uh, year 2000. I guess we must have done this right after the new year. Um, amazing to see how the field of organic chemistry in just 10-year increments was so completely different. What was being done in 1970 by 1980 looked very simple. 1990 made 1980 look very simple. 2000 made 1990 look very simple. If we did this again in my group meeting, we would see the same thing for 2010 and so on. So in the lab, day to day, reading the literature, day by day, ASAP by ASAP, it looks like we're making very, very incremental progress. But when you pause and ask the question, what's going on decade by decade, the pace of progress in organic chemistry is very fast. And that is inspiring, and that maybe is my prediction, that the pace of organic chemistry will continue to be very, very fast um, as, as modern science, modern analytical techniques, new thinking about reaction mechanism, interpretation of large data sets, doing chemistry on very complex substrates, we will get better and better at this. And, and as we look at it decade by decade, um, whatever we're doing today, I am quite optimistic that in 2026, the experiments we're doing, we're going to make what we're doing in 2016 look very, very simple. <laughs>